Alright, it's time to get back to work on my warrior here. And uh, I'm going to be working on this area here. I love this little candle I got. It's a hundred hour plus candle. I got it at some hardware store someplace, and maybe in Bozeman, but it's perfect for uh, keeping tools hot when you need to have them hot. Somebody suggested I use a uh, hot iron to do this. I think I did one time, and the hot iron was just a little too hot. I like to control the heat, and uh, one of the sure ways to do that is just with a flame. Okay, what I'm doing now is just adding some texture with a serrated, serrated edged wire tool. It has little grooves cut into the uh, leading edge of the uh, tool that uh, can leave nice little textures in your sculpture. It makes it look sculptured and it gives some uh, well it gives it a, a different look than like say the skin on the hand and the, the moccasin it, it just makes it different in texture and therefore your eye thinks material difference Ah, that's what it does. Anyway, that's what I'm doing right now. That noise you hear in the background is my dryer. One of the nice things about my new house, it has a washer and dryer. When you sculpt, you have to sculpt with both hands. You have to be a little ambidextrous. I guess that's the word. I'm not certain. I could be wrong. And if you're going to put texture into something, use the same tool all over the piece for that particular type of uh, material. Uh, now, I've got the inside of the shirt showing here, the outside of the shirt. We do the outside of the shirt the same texture. The inside of the shirt, I'm going to do a little tighter texture. Just to make it look like it has a difference between the outside and inside. And some of this texturing I'll do at the, at the foundry as well. When and if I do leave it off to be cast. Because the lighting will be different and I'll see things that uh, I didn't catch with this lighting. Okay, this is the inside 
of the skin of his leggings. And uh, it's flipped down and over. And for that reason, I'm going to put a little different texture into that area. Just a little lighter serration tool. And uh, it just gives it a little, a little bit of difference. Not a huge, but uh, enough to be seen in bronze. The opposite side of the serrated edge is a smooth edge. And those things you want smooth, you can uh, use that edge or that uh, part of the tool to do that. want to have a ragged uh, bottom to this loincloth because it would show it be it had been worn a lot also if he's got a particular outfit that brings him protection he would keep it even if it was worn. And uh, so that's kind of like what I'm doing here. Like he's been jabbed at. Whoop. Man, I keep dropping my tools. Now, yeah, way over there. Deconstructing is always stressful because you put a lot of time in to what you put on there. And now you're taking it apart. Which may or may not be a good thing. Only one way to find out, and that's to try. I think his neck's a little short, so I'm going to lengthen that a little bit. I got to... Ah, that's why. Okay. There's a hole. I'm using a uh, true form armature, and the skull is inside this head. And uh, <coughs> I need to build up the neck a little bit. Not always stressful to. change things, but uh, 
you know, after a couple of years, you have a different vision. And because of that, the piece will change as well. All right, that's all I'm going to do tonight. I'll pick this up tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.